This is just a brief look at building an XML file using Dreamweaver. If we go to the File menu, go File New, bring up the uh, new document window, you'll notice that inside the page type list here, XML is one of the ones that's listed. If we click Create, there we go. This is an XML document. It's just a blank file, and we can type whatever we want. Now. The only thing that we have to keep in mind is that the first line has to be the doc type declaration. So this angle bracket question mark XML, that has to be the first thing on this file. If those five characters are not the first thing on the first line of the file, it won't be properly interpreted as an XML file. Now, once inside, we're going to create tags. It's a markup language, so it uses angle brackets with tags. Now I can create a root tag and call it whatever I want. As long as I'm following the naming convention, which is using letters and numbers and underscores, and starting with a letter, I can use anything that I want. The names are case sensitive. If I've got an opening tag, I've got to have a closing tag, or it has to be self-closing. For the root tag, that is the one that's at this first level. The other ones are children of this. There can only be one of these root tags. Here I've decided to call it data, but I could have called it anything at all. I could have called it Steve. Whatever we want, as long as we use the same tag in both places. Inside, create other tags. There we go. So I have an info tag inside of a Steve tag. All right, so markup language looks a lot like HTML. We're just nesting tags. What is XML used for? It's used for storing information. It's used for storing data so that we can transfer it from one location to another. Yeah, I could use it in a store. Oh, no. Supplies, I'll create a supplies tag. Inside of that will be a list of my products. So I'll have a product tag, give it an ID. There's a product tag. Inside that, we could have a name of the product. So that's a gear. Also inside of product, maybe there's a SKU. A lot of stores use SKUs to represent products. It's like similar to the ID. Now we all just make up some information the SKU, maybe there's a price, and the gear's going to be $12.86, there we go. So that's a product inside of supplies. We could make up a whole series of these products. They would have different IDs, different names, different SKUs, different prices, and so on. So this is an XML file. It's meant to be a text file representation of a bunch of information. And it's text file worth of information that can be read by a machine or by a human. So long as we follow a very orderly convention when we're creating these files, computer programs can read these files. And with very little instruction, you can give this to a client and they would be able to read the file and understand it as well. So this is just an example of creating one. We uh, can save the file, we can view it in the browser. Here's an example of a file in the browser. This is how browsers render XML. And notice at the top it says, hey, you don't have any style information for this. Well, yeah, that's fine. We don't need styles. We're not building web pages. We are building pages that contain information. So we can pass information back and forth between the browser and the server. Another cool thing about the browser is it gives you these little drop-down arrows so we can open up tags to take a look at them. There we go, there's those files, or those tags rather. Just like XML, these are made up of three different types of things. There are the elements, data, people, those are elements, the tags, those are called element nodes. Inside the element nodes, we can have two other things. There are attributes, like ID. We can make up other ones as well. And there are text nodes. 
So we have element nodes, text nodes, and attribute nodes. And those are the three things that make up all the XML files. Just like in HTML, there are those three core things that we have to know about.